There are a gazillion videos out here on YouTube about Sony's Xperia 1 Mark V. And I know because I watched at least 20 before dropping my own cash on this new flagship smartphone. And every one of those videos mentions that the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, another mouthful, mentions that it has a 3.5mm headphone socket, but not a single one of those videos discusses its sound quality. So today, we remedy that. Welcome back everybody. Yes, the Xperia 1 Mark V from Sony is one of the last flagship smartphones in the world to have a headphone socket. And the question on my mind when I bought mine was, is that headphone socket any good? And to answer this question today, we are going to lean on five, five side-by-side -side comparisons. But before we get to the audio stuff, I want to share some things that I really like about this Sony phone. Now the close to stock Android is most welcome with me. I can't stand all those skinned Android phones. And the Sony interface for me seems to be less Fisher Price-esque than my outgoing Google Pixel 7 Pro, which actually does run stock Android. And the Sony's more elegant look might also be because the screen is quite frankly beautiful. It has an unusual longer and not so tall aspect ratio. It has a 4K resolution and a 120 Hertz refresh rate. And each of those things contribute to what I think is a deeply satisfying user experience. And the fingerprint reader on the side of a Sony is refreshingly responsive, especially when compared to the Pixel's on-screen fingerprint reader. But there's no face unlock on this Sony phone. But I think most people are buying this Sony flagship phone for the camera, and it's a powerhouse. And the Photography Pro camera app is a manual setting lover's dream, it really is. And this is the smartphone. If you really want to learn about how shutter speed and ISO can influence the look of a photo. Heck, there's even a dedicated shutter button on the side of the phone. Now for point and shooters, basic shooting mode gives solid but not startlingly good results. They're okay, but they're not great. And photos really don't have that Instagram ready sort of color pop that I get from my Pixel or an iPhone. And that's probably because Sony isn't doing a whole lot of post-processing on the photos that we take. But straight out of the app, the Sony's photos look more natural than Google's or Apple's. And we can always add any extra pop that we want in post. And if you're using this Sony phone to record lots of 4K video, especially at higher frame rates, you might wish to avail yourself of the micro SD card slot, which shares space with the SIM card slot on the bottom of the phone. And as we know, micro SD cards are also where many portable playing music lovers like to store their music. And the Xperia 1 Mark V is also one of a handful of phones to feature Qualcomm's Snapdragon Sound chipset with support for Aptex lossless. Now that's useful if we want to stream CD quality losslessly over Bluetooth to say one of iFi's latest DACs or to a pair of Bose's latest ultra quiet comfort headphone models. But at time of recording, that's pretty much it in terms of Aptex lossless compatible receivers. But we're not here today to talk about the Sony's Bluetooth capabilities, at least not yet, because this video is about how the Sony flagship sounds with wired headphones. Now, initial impressions in this respect were very favorable. I hooked in a pair of Fio's 350 ohm FT3 and expected the Sony to come up short on gain, and it didn't. But that happiness was kind of short-lived because when I plugged the FT3 into Fio's own R7 headphone amplifier and DAC and streamer that we've covered a bajillion times on this channel already this year, I heard a much fuller and much more tonally colorful sound, which yeah, contrasted the, the Sony phone as just a bit is the word pallid? Is that a word, pallid, like pale? Yeah, it just, it wasn't good. But when I'm at home, I pretty much always plug any full-sized headphones into a desktop amplifier, like the R7, which is sitting over there. And when I'm out and about in the street, I tend to prefer earphones or IEMs or whatever you want to call them, but not big over the, over the head or, you know, like on head headphones. No, I don't take those out very often, apart from in the winter <laughs> when it gets very cold in Berlin and I want to keep my ears warm when I'm outside and I have to wear a hat. So that's when I reach for my Sennheiser Bluetooth headphones or the T plus A Bluetooth headphones.
Now to test the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V with IEMs, I used two different sets. I went with the Meze Advar and the Sennheiser IE600. However, be warned that what follows are general impressions where laser guided specifics have been traded in for a greater number of side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, we might assume that because this flagship phone sells for a whopping 1400 euros, that Sony has simply transplanted the audio circuit from its 400 euro Walkman into the phone's innards, and we would be wrong. And to be fair to Sony, it isn't making any grand claims about the headphone output on its phone either. And that's probably a good thing because when running the Walkman side by side with the Xperia and with the Meze Advar in tow, the NWA306 Walkman is clearly the more sprightly sounding device and it has greater clarity and more dynamic oomph. And that difference is not small. It's not night and day, but it's not small. And what makes that all the more surprising is that the Walkman is no powerhouse in and of itself. You know, it's kind of at the weaker end of headphone outputs. So if you're wondering what kind of DAC and headphone amplifier circuit is inside the Xperia, you'll have to keep wondering because Sony isn't saying. The only thing that they do tell us is that it's 24 bit, 192 kilohertz capable. Now back with my testing, thinking it might be the Advar helping the audible difference between the smartphone and the Walkman to yawn so widely, I cut over to the IE600, but I got a similar result. But surely the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V sounds better than a dongle DAC attached to its USB socket on the bottom. So to test this, I pulled up Fio's balanced KA2 dongle DAC and tried the Sennheiser again. Now the IE600 come with balanced cables, but obviously I use the supplied three and a half mil cables when connecting those Sennheiser to the Sony phone. And here, the delta between the dongle DAC and the phone was even wider than with the Walkman. The Sony's 3.5mm socket lacks body, especially in the low end and the mid-range, which is very frustrating. Now, those of you getting all lost in the apples and the oranges here should be reminded that, yes, it might be the connection topology that makes a difference, like balance versus single-ended. But the end result is the end result. And that end result is that a 65 euro dongle DAC slash headphone amp sounds better than the DAC slash headphone amp circuit installed by Sony into its flagship phone. And to be clear, there is no digital magic going on with the Sony phone either. The KA2 sounds the same connected to the Sony phone as it does connected to the Pixel 7 Pro over USB-C. But to appease the fruit gods, let's try to make things a little more apples to apples. So for example, the AudioQuest Dragonfly Black is a single-ended dongle DAC that sells for around 120 euros, something like that. Now, like the Fio's 4.4 millimeter output, the three and a half mil output on the AudioQuest dongle is hotter than the Sony phone. So that means it can play louder. So obviously we have to, well, I had to level match my testing settings pretty carefully actually, and do it over a number of hours. That's why these videos take so long. If I don't just sit there and listen to this for five minutes and this for five minutes, I'm taking one out for half a day and then plugging in the other one for the other half of the day or when I come back home. So it's like half day here, half day there, then another half day there with something else. But even when level match with the Xperia, we get a fuller sound from the Dragonfly Black. And on detail retrieval, the two three and a half mil outputs are reasonably well matched but the Sony just sounds thinner than the AudioQuest dongle. And again, this side-by-side -side comparison was conducted with both the Sennheiser IE600 and the Meze Advar. And it's only when comparing the Xperia's output to say, Apple's Lightning to three and a half mil adapter, do we really find the Sony phone's level. However, I really should add that the sound of the Xperia 1 Mark V is livelier in the treble than the Apple rig. And that lends the Sony a greater sense of delicacy and finesse with microdynamics. Now, 
old war horses thumping the table about how they don't make phones like they did back in my day will probably want to know how does the Sony phone compare to a discontinued LG phone? Because before quitting the phone business, LG paid a great deal of attention to the audio circuitry found in its flagship models. So for example, the V30, the V40, and the V60 were all sort of kings among men, and they still are. I have a V40 and its three and a half mil output sounds more tonally satisfying and chunkier than the Sony, even though the Sony offers up possibly a smidge more detail. So why don't I continue to use the LG V40 as my sort of everyday phone? Well, there are three reasons. The first one is that it's no longer receiving software updates. The second one is the camera. It is pretty damn weak by 2023 standards. And the third one is that Rune Arc won't start on that old LG phone. But then again, the Sony Walkman, I don't know what's happened in the last six months, but the Sony Walkman is no longer, for me, properly running Rune Arc. So yeah, I don't really know what's going on there either. Now, does the Sony blow the LG out of the water on picture quality? I'm talking about photos here. Yeah, I really think it does but the LG sounds better than the Sony. So again, swings and roundabouts. Now comes the spicy finding, which returns some positivity to the Xperia 1 Mark V. And that's with the Sennheiser IE 300, the 300, the more affordable model, the Sony smartphone sounds just fine. Its top end doesn't draw too much attention to itself and its instrumentation is, yeah, it's reasonably well fleshed out albeit without the, the resolution and player shape definition of the two more costly IEMs that I mentioned earlier, the IE600 and the Meze Adva. And that sort of more affordable earphone matching satisfaction I also get from Fio's FF3 earbud. So it seems that the Sony phone is just fine when we don't reach too high into the sort of the higher end of IEM choices which I think tend to expose the Sony phone's weaknesses. However, you need to know that even with those Fio earbuds and the more affordable Sennheiser IEMs, the Walkman and the AudioQuest dongle DAC still better the sound of the Sony with those more affordable earphones. However, I think I should also add this, is that judged from purely a music playback standpoint, I prefer this Sony Xperia 1 Mark V phone with the IE300 or the FF3 over Sony's True Wireless WF 1000 XM5 earphones. So I think the wired solution offers more musical satisfaction. I'm not saying it's musical, I'm just saying it offers more musical satisfaction than the Bluetooth equivalent. I say equivalent, I mean roughly price equivalent. So the FF3 earbuds from Fio are about a hundred and something bucks, and the IE300 are, what are they, 250 euros, 300 euros, something like that. So they're roughly the same price as the Sony True Wireless, but I really do think you get a better result, generally speaking, from wired earphones than Bluetooth headphones, even though Bluetooth headphones can do far more and give us noise cancellation and transparency mode and all those kind of niceties. And we don't have a cable either, you know, because the cable can be annoying for many people and it's hard to go back. But yeah, from a music playback point of view, I prefer the Sony flagship phone with those more affordable wired IEMs. And I think that's because really the sound we get from the wired solution sounds more rounded, more whole, and it doesn't sound as spiky or as digital as Bluetooth earphones. And I've mentioned this word before, haven't I? But the, the wired setup for me sounds more musically pure than a pair of true wireless Bluetooth headphones, which I tend to think by contrast sound a little bit tonally diluted. Now, obviously we were never gonna get DAP levels of performance from a smartphone like the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, especially not in 2023 when headphone sockets are a rarity. But equally, 
Just because that headphone socket exists on a smartphone doesn't necessarily mean it's anything more than serviceable. And I think that's very much the case with this Sony. The headphone socket exists, it's okay, it's perfectly serviceable with a pair of more affordable wired IEMs. But if Sony are going to continue with the headphone socket on their flagship smartphone, I really wish they'd do more with it. But then again, with the market for wired earphones, I think dwindling or certainly dwarfed by the explosion of true wireless models, Bluetooth models, I think we really have to ask ourselves not whether Sony will continue to improve the sound of the headphone socket in future, but whether it will exist on their flagship smartphone in the future at all. So maybe wired headphone listeners like me and possibly you should be grateful that it exists at all. You know, it's just like a, I guess I would see this, this headphone socket on this particular phone as a convenience feature for wired headphone enthusiasts. It's not gonna set the world on fire, but it's there and it works and it's okay, but it's basic. So if you like this video, don't forget to like or subscribe down below. And if you're watching this video on Patreon, you'll be seeing it early without the ads and with a bloopers reel at the end where I stuff up and I almost stuffed up there, didn't I? But my Patreon also features music playlists for every video we've ever made which saves you having to shazam what you're hearing in the interludes of these videos, or pausing it to look at what's on my phone screen or on the TV screen to write down the music choices that I'm including in these videos. So if you'll consider supporting me over on Patreon, even if it's just for a month or something, just to buy me a cup of coffee, that would be marvelous. Thank you ever so much for watching.